Reconstruction of the Theater, drawn by Walter Godfrey in 1911 based on the builders' contract the Fortune Playhouse was a historic theater in London. It was located between White Cross Street and the modern Golden Lane, just outside the city of London. It was founded about 1600, and suppressed by the Puritan Parliament in 1642. The Fortune Playhouse is shown at the top center of this London street map. Enlarge the Fortune Theater was contemporary with Shakespeare's Globe, The Swan and others, it stood in the parish of St. Giles without Cripplegate, to the west of the Shoreditch locations of the theatre and the Curtain Theatre. Between White Cross Street and Golden Lane in what is today named Fortune Street, just outside the city of London. Between 1600 and 1642, it was among the chief venues for drama in London. The site is said to have originally been occupied by a nursery for the children of Henry VIII. The fortune was erected as the second half of a substantial realignment of London's chief acting companies. In 1597, the Lord Chamberlain's men had left, or rather been ejected, from the theatre, they abandoned Shoreditch and in 1599 constructed a new theatre, the Globe, in Southwark. The Admiral's men, then playing in the nearby and ageing Rose Theatre, suddenly faced stiff competition for Bankside audiences. At this point, the Admiral's manager Philip Henslow and his stepson-in-law, the leading actor Edward Allen, made plans to move to Shoreditch. Allen appears to have funded the new theatre, later selling half-interest to his father-in-law. They paid £240 for a 30-year lease on a plot of land between tenements on Golding and White Cross Lane. They hired Peter Street, who had just finished building the Globe, to make them a playhouse. Street was paid £440 for the construction job, with another £80 spent for painting and incidental expenses, the cost of the physical building was £520. The total expenses for the project, including the securing of property rights and clearances of previous leases, came to £1,320. Maintaining the theatre cost about £120 per year in the first decade of its existence. Because the contract for the construction was preserved among Allen's papers, a good deal more is known about the fortune than about the other outdoor theatres. The document also casts some light on the features of the globe, since Henslow and Allen plan their theatre with an eye on their rival's venue. Many of the details in the contract are for sizes equal to or bigger than the Globe's equivalent. A depiction of the fortune in a stained glass memorial to Edward Allen The plot of land on which the theatre sat was approximately square, 127 feet across and 129 feet deep. The theatre was built on a foundation of lime and brick, square-shaped, each wall measured 80 feet outside and 55 within. The building was three stories tall, the first floor galleries were 12 feet high, those on the second floor 11, those on the third, 9. Each row of galleries was 12 feet deep. Henslow and Allen specified that the fortune outdo the globe in every point for scantlings, they also provided, in accordance with common practice, for tuppany rooms and gentlemen's rooms. The building was constructed of lath and plaster, with wood floors in the galleries. The stage and tiring house were thrust forward into the middle of the square. The tiring house had glazed windows, the manner of its attachment to the stage is unknown but presumably similar to that of the swan. The stage was 43 feet across, it was covered with tile. Plaque in Fortune Street, London Henslow and Allen's plans met with considerable opposition from the neighborhood and city officials. With the aid of their patron, Charles Howard, the Lord Admiral, they secured permission from the Privy Council for the venture. Henslow seems also to have soothed his neighbor's worries by pledging substantial amounts to charity in the parish. The theatre housed the Admiral's men by late 1600, as revealed by correspondence of the Venetian ambassador in London. This troupe remained as tenants for more than two decades, surviving the deaths of both Henslow and Allen, and remaining fairly stable under the successive patronage of Prince Henry and Lord Paul's grave. Upon Henslow's death, Allen assumed full control of the property. Originally described as the fairest playhouse in the town, the fortune suffered a slow decline in reputation over the decades. In 1605, notorious roisterer Mary Frith may have appeared on the boards, singing and playing a lute, it is not clear from the consistory court records in which this event is described if the players were a party to her antics. In 1612, the theatre was mentioned by name in a city order suppressing the post-performance jigs, which authorities believe led to fistfights and thefts. That this belief had some merit is suggested by a case the next year, in which a country farmer stabbed a city gentleman. In 1614, Thomas Tomkiss's academic play Albumazar linked the Fortune and the Red Bull Theatre as raucous places to see old-fashioned fare such as the Spanish tragedy. 
the aspersion stuck, as did the conjunction of Northside theaters. Yet the conventional view should not be exaggerated, on one and perhaps two occasions, ambassadors visited the theater. On the first and less certain occasion, a member of the Venetian delegation, Orazio Bisno, describes a visit in December 1617 to a theater that may have been the fortune. On the second, the notorious Gondomar certainly visited Allen and the others there in 1621, after the performance the players held a banquet in his honor. On December 9, 1621, the fortune burned to the ground, taking with it the company's stock of plays and properties. To meet the £1,000 cost of rebuilding, Allen formed a partnership of 12 sharers, each paying an initial amount of £83.6s. 8d. By then aged and busy with Dulwich College, he took only one share for himself, and leased the property to the company's sharers for £128 per year. The theatre reopened in March 1623. When Allen died in 1626, the college assumed control of the lease, the actor Richard Gunnell became its manager. Yet this change does not appear to have changed operations at the theatre. The new theatre appears to have been made of brick, with a lead and tile roof as fireproofing measure. It also seems to have been round, abandoning its unconventional square shape. The reputation of the theatre did not improve after its reconstruction. In 1626, it was the scene of a riot involving sailors, in the course of which a constable was assaulted. In 1628, a protégé of Buckingham was assaulted by a mob after leaving a performance there. In 1631, Paul's Graves men moved to the playhouse at Salisbury Court, they were replaced at the fortune by the actors of the King's Revels. The only play definitely associated with this period is a comedy, now lost, by William Hemmings, son of John Hemmings. In 1635, a company that had been at the Red Bull Theatre occupied the theatre, only to meet a notable run of bad fortune, play closed the theatres for more than a year, from May 1636 to October 1637. Since they had no income from the theatre, the twelve shareholders in the theatre fell seriously arrears in their payments to Dulwich College, by more than £165. In 1639, the actors were fined £1,000 for depicting a religious ceremony on stage, this depiction was taken as anti-Catholic, but in the late 1630s, almost any reference to religion was risky. This group returned to the Red Bull at Easter 1640, and the remnants of Paul's Graves Company, now under the patronage of the young Prince Charles and therefore called Prince Charles's men, returned to the fortune. When Parliament ordered all theatres closed in 1642, the fortune entered a slow but irreversible decline. The actors at least occasionally violated the order, for they were raided and their property seized during a performance almost a year after the closure, between the expiration of the original order and the enactment of new. More stringent orders in 1649, the players returned to the theatre. In 1649, soldiers pulled down the stage and the gallery seats. By the restoration, it had partially collapsed, and the masters of Dulwich sold what remained as scrap. The Tsubauchi Memorial Theatre Museum in Tokyo, based on the fortune. The 1599 contract for building the Fortune Theatre was found in the papers of theatrical manager Philip Henslow at Dulwich College. The contract gives some overall dimensions of the fortune but there are no plans or elevations. Thanks for watching.